Hey, welcome back to Startup Screen Printing. My name is Jesse. Today we're going to go through separations in Illustrator. Now, if you don't have RIP software, you're going to need to do this manually. But there is a portion of this work up until using the RIP software that's the same whether you do manually manual separations or using RIP software. So we're going to go through all of that. We're going to go through the setup part and I'll call out what point you do send it to the RIP if you have it. And then we'll go through the actual manual separations, creating the different film layers that you need to print so you can print multiple films. Um, the Again, I use Illustrator. I've been using the Adobe Creative products since I was like 12 years old. I'm going to be 40 this year, so it's a long time. <laughs> so these are second nature to me, but I'm going to try and go super detail for beginners so that you can understand how to do this yourself. But if you're using another software, that's totally fine. There are other options out there. Corel Draw being one of them. Affinity Designer has their own their own version of Illustrator. I think it's called Affinity Designer. And there's some others out there. But anyways, whatever you're using, the process is going to be similar. It's just the tools probably look different and you might have to go through some different steps. But if you're using Illustrator, this is exactly how I did separations when I was doing them manually. And I hope this helps. So what I have here is a vector artwork. This is just a design that I did recently as a shop shirt just for the fun of it. Not selling this shirt at all. It was just something that we wanted to do for fun modeled after a Patagonia design, but Patagonia always has super cool stuff. And so we just copied their, their theme here. And again, doesn't matter because I'm not selling it. It was just for fun. But this was one that I did recently as a discharge print. And that was a lot of fun as well. I'm going to go through how I separated this artwork or, or what I, how I, what I did to get it ready to send a rip, but then what I would do if I were separating it manually. So if I select everything here, you can see that everything is still editable. So I've still got text here that I can click into and change. I've got a line here that I can change the stroke weight. It's, I can still edit everything. And I, I want to, first thing, I want to convert this to all objects, not editable things like text or strokes. So I'm going to select everything. Actually, first, this is great. Before you do anything, I recommend always taking your artwork and pulling over a copy. So we've got a copy now. I don't want this to mess with when I'm doing select of colors and stuff. So I'm going to do command two and it's going to lock that copy. So it's just locked. I can't edit it. I could do, I could select over here and include that and it's not going to select it. So that's what I want. So now I have a copy in case things go wrong. Always do that. Okay. So now I'm going to select everything. I'm going to go to object, expand, and we're going to leave all these checked and I'm going to click OK. What this has done now is it's turned all of the previously editable objects into vector objects. And so I no longer have text that I can edit. Now I just have a vector text object. Um, same thing with the stroke. I no longer have a stroke that I can edit. I just have a vector object that is two circles, essentially. So now what I want to do is I want to flatten this artwork. Now, if you're, if you were in Photoshop, that is the term to flatten it in Illustrator, we're actually going to do something called merge. And what we're hoping happens here, the goal here is if I click into these, you can see these are shapes that are bigger than what they appear to be. Okay. So that if we go by appearance only, this looks like the orange area here looks like three different orange objects but it's not, it's just one. But what I want this want to happen is I want that to be three small orange objects whose boundaries are defined by what is visible right here. So wherever something else is covering the orange, I want to just get rid of that orange. So essentially merging everything down to a single layer. And as something is on top covers something on bottom, it clips away the thing on bottom. And so that's what I want to happen. I want it to clip the thing on the bottom so that all of the objects are turned into objects that are defined, their, their boundaries are defined by what is visible of that given object. <laughs> Hope that makes sense. So let's just see it in action and maybe that'll help. So if I go over here to my properties panel, if you don't have this, you go to window, properties and i'm going to go to the pathfinder down here and again if you don't have pathfinder you can go to window window pathfinder and it will open up a separate box for it so 
we're going to use this. If I were using this one over here, I would click these little three dots and that would open up all of the options in my Pathfinder. But if I'm using the, the window here, then I can see all of the options here out in the open. The one I'm going to use is Merge. So in Illustrator, instead of Flatten, if we're flattening the layers in Photoshop, in Illustrator, we're not dealing with layers um, per se. We're dealing with objects that are organized and stacked on each other. So it's essentially the same type of scenario and we're going to merge them. So if I choose this merge object or merge option, what's going to happen is all the objects, again, as they stack, what's visible is going to be clipped into an individual object. But what is the same color, if it's touching another object that's the same color, it is then going to be combined into a single object. So if I see a lot of overlap here on the black areas, like this black object, goes into this black object here, then that now is going to become one black object. Again, this is all exactly what I want to happen. So if I hit merge here, we can just see it happen. Now I can double click into this or I can just hold command and see all the dots. You can see now, these are just individual objects now. No longer do I have the layers behind them or the overlapping or anything like that. I've now got three objects here in this orange and these objects boundaries are defined by what was visible of those orange areas. So that's exactly what I wanted to happen. Now this is now grouped. And so we can begin to move this over into our film layer that I have here. I've got a 13 by 19 artboard set up, but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull over a copy because I'm about to do some manipulation. So now I've got it to that point. I'm going to lock that one. I'm good to go. Let's go back to this one. Okay. Now I'm going to size this to the dimensions that I want it to be to print. For a circle, they typically give the illusion of being larger than they actually are. So I usually go around eight and a half to nine inches for a circle. It gives a good full size appearance without being too big. So it's worked well for me, but feel free to make this whatever size you want. So I just adjusted the size right up here in the transform panel. Again, window, transform, will pull out a individual panel here for you and you can do it that way or I like to use this properties panel. So I've got a circle here now that is nine inches. I've got my, I have several symbols here that I've set up in my art template. So I'm gonna pull over my registration marks. So I'll pull these down. I'm gonna align both of these and these are set to selection, which means align everything that's selected, which is what I want. So I'm going to select horizontally center align those. So now they are aligned to each other, but I also want them to be aligned to the artboard because I want them to be in the center of the film, which is always preferred. If this were smaller, let me give you a warning here. Let's break the link on this and I'm going to pull my registration marks up a little bit. Okay. So let me group these together. Command G groups those together and let's just pull this over to the side for just a minute. I want to give some examples here. If you were doing artwork that was this size and you wanted to do two of them and, and like this was one layer and this was another layer, you might have some variance in the registration simply because this is at a different part in the film. If you were to do one this way, even more so because that inkjet printer is printing horizontally this way. When it goes to print this other one, these two are not really going to line up perfectly in registration. If I were to take this, print it on film, cut it out, and then flip it back to match this, they're probably going to be a little bit off. So keep that in mind when you're setting up artwork for films. I try to print more films if I need to, just to keep the artwork in the exact same location. So it's key that these registration marks and this artwork is printed on exactly this portion of this, of each film every time. Okay. So I would do that. If you want to fill this other space or you want to utilize this and not waste film, pull an artwork from another order and throw it in there and print them both at the same time. But just make sure that you're consistent on where that's placed. Otherwise, you could have some variance. You might not, but I've run into it several times and I finally figured out, took me a, within my first year to finally figure it out. Um, and it was because of the different orientation of the film and or of the artwork on the film in different location and how the printer would print it caused some issues. Okay. Back to the separation. So we've got our artwork here. We want to align this now center to the film. So if I have this off a little bit, 
if I go to the, back to this align tool, I don't want to do the selection. I want it to be to the artboard. So we're going to center that. And now we've got that centered on the artboard. I usually try not to waste too much film at the top. So I'll put that close to the top. Now we're ready to start doing our separations. So what I want to do now is I want to, I, you can do this before or after you start to separate each one. I'm actually going to do it before because it's going to be a, make it a little easier on us in a minute. So let's go in here first and let's double click into here. I don't want to ungroup it. Let's select each of the color groupings. So just select one, select same fill and stroke. You can do fill color. I like to do fill and stroke just to be safe. Command G. I'm going to hold shift and do the purples. Command G. Shift and do the blues. Command G. I'm going to select all of the white. Select same. Fill and stroke. Command G. And then I'm going to select all of the black. And so, see, I selected the black. It looks like I don't have all of it selected. That means I've got two things here that appear to be black, but they're using different swatches. So I don't want that to happen. I want them to use the same swatch. So this is actually using this rich black swatch that I've set up here. I've got it set to 35% of the cyan, magenta, and yellow, 100% black. If you're printing on a printer that doesn't have the UV all black ink, it's just got the standard CMYK ink in it, or even the CMYK and light magenta and light cyan. So it's got six colors. Then... I recommend adding some colors to your black. Don't just do the 100% K here. Add some of the colors to it because it's going to lay more ink down on the film and that's going to increase that ink layer so that it's darker and it will prevent more light from coming through. Little side tip there. But anyways, I've got this. These are set to this rich black. Let's see what the other one is here. This one, it's just a standard black. So let's go ahead and select everything that has that. And let's change it to that rich black swatch. And then let's select everything now that has the rich black. If I move this, you can see, okay, so that's everything now. That's all the blacks. So let's just command G and group it. So now I have all of my colors grouped together and I'm ready to begin separations. That's just going to make it easier to select one and get all of the white selected and I'll have to do it later. Again, you can do it throughout the process. I like to do it up front. Almost forgot. Okay. I have everything grouped now. I've got it placed on my film. Now, again, you can do this multiple ways as well. You could select a color and change everything, change it to black, change everything else to white, then pull it off to the side and do another one. And I think an easy way to do this is just to copy the artboard. So if I select my artboard to tool over here and then I hold option and click and drag, I'm going to copy and I'm holding shift just so it goes in a straight line because I like it to be in a straight line. So option, shift, click and drag, and I'm copying it. There are eight colors in this design. So there's three of the colors, one, two, three, four, five, six, three of those colors, so six, and white and black. So we've got eight colors. Now I'm going to hold shift while I still have the artboard tool and select all of them. Then I'm going to hold option, shift, click and drag, and pull them down. So now I've got all eight of my films ready to go. Okay, so now I just need to go in and separate the colors for each one of these. So let's go into the first one and talk about how we're going to separate the colors. All right, let's say black's going to be the easy one. It's already set, so I could just select the black, hold shift, select everything else, change it to white. I now have my black film. Super easy. So let's move on. Let's do the white. Um, let's assume that this is no under base. It's going on a white shirt. So I've got my white selected. Actually, I'm still in the group. Now I've got my white selected. I'm going to hit black. Then I'm going to hold shift, click and drag, select everything other than the white. If I hold shift and click and drag, it deselects whatever was selected and selects whatever was not selected. So that's why I hold shift. Now I'm going to change this to white. So now I have my white layer and obviously you wouldn't print white ink on a white shirt. So let's just say it was like a light gray or something, something to where you won't need an underbase under the colors. So this is what that would look like. Let's do this color. We'll do purple. We just change this to black. Hold shift, click and drag, change everything to white. 
Now we've got our purple and so on. We continue to do this with each color. So let's just run through it here really quick. Select the black, Oop. hold shift, click and drag, change to white. Change this to black, hold shift, change to white. So again, the super easy, there's, there's really nothing to this. It's just changing everything to the black that you're going to print, whatever that is, and then changing everything else that needs to be hidden to white. Now, you could delete everything else, but what if you need to make a change? You know, what if you need to make an adjustment somewhere? It's better just to do it as white and leave it there just in case. So let's change this one to black. And these to white. Okay, so we've got all of our films. So now at this point, this artwork is now ready for me to print all the films and go make my screens. It's that easy. Now let's let's step back a little bit and see what we would do if we did need an underbase. So let's say let me hold Command Option Shift, Command Option Two, and unlock these layers. I'm going to go ahead and take this one back and lock it again, and I'm going to pull down a copy of this one. And now let's say, yeah, let's just do this. Let's do it this way. So let's start over with this one here. And let's say, let me just pull out another artboard for us to use here. So let's just work on this one. Let's imagine, for example, that we have a black shirt that we're going to print this on. Let's throw this to the back. Let's see what this will look like with black. And so in this scenario, we wouldn't need all of the black prints so we can actually remove that from our artwork because now the black's just going to show through so it's just going to be the shirt so we don't need the black ink on this particular instance but what we would need is a white underbase behind the colors so how do we do that if we take our film here that we had set up, let's first just go in here and remove all the black. We, we don't need it. We have all this other stuff that we had as white. Okay, let's go in here and take a look at it. We had this one that was a color, this was a color, and this was a color. Let's just change all of this to black so we can look at it. Okay, so let's say this was our underbase, and we know that here's where the colors are going to land. Okay. So what we need to do is there are a couple of ways to choke this, but essentially you need to shrink down these sections a little bit so that the white doesn't expand outside of the colored layer that's going to go on top of it. It's called choking, and we want to, you can do this one of two ways. that You can either choke a white underbase by printing something else over it or around it to prevent it from bleeding out. Or you can choke it by shrinking it a little bit and letting the color overlap onto the edge so that the white's not visible. So in this instance, we would let the color wrap over it because we don't have anything wrapping around here. If we had the black, we'll look at that in a minute. So if I have this selected, there are two ways that printers like to do this. You either add a stroke to this and you can mess with how big of a stroke you want to do based on how fine the detail is or how big the design is or how precise your registration is, honestly. So if you look in here, you can see now that stroke that I added around here has now covered up the black a little bit. So now we have this, out this outside line here is where the original color was, and that's where it will be when it prints. And in the interior black is what is the white portion that it's going to print on top of. So that's one way to do it. Another way that I've always done it, if we just take this off now, we don't want that stroke on there, is I've always gone to effect, path, offset path, and I'd go negative 0.0, .0. I've got to start somewhere, we'll see what 5 looks like. Oh, way too much. Okay, so we'll go 0 .005. Mm, looks like 
not quite enough. So let's point one. That looks pretty good. Let's zoom in and take a look at it. Great. So you can see that looks pretty good, but I have way more precision with the offset path than I do with a stroke. With a stroke, you look, you, you had 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, or one point, and it goes up from there. You can type in regulars there, but there's also some variances in how strokes will apply to different angles. Um, if they're too sharp, it juts way out, or it might round over or something like that. So it can be a bit of an issue sometimes. So I found that this offset path was a little more consistent. So if we go back and go back to offset path, I, you can see that I could do 0 0.001. Or you could go up a little bit at a time and you can see it start to expand here. Point three. So just wh whatever you think, negative point zero seven five. It's just whatever, you know, measurement you want to use, but I like to apply that offset path. So that's how we would prepare an underbase. If we had no no colors going around to choke that underbase and we needed to use the color on top to overlap the edges. What if we were printing this version with the black onto something like a green hoodie, which is one that I did. Super simple. I actually just took everything in the artwork. Let's go back here until I get my black. There we go. What I did was I took everything in the artwork. I turned it black. I think I've just had black selected. Yep. Everything in the artwork. Turned it black. And then I just flattened it. So I click the three dots here, click merge, did like that. I have a little bit of artifacts here. Let's delete that. And now I would just want to apply that offset path to this circle. So again, we're going to do that as a 0 0.05. Not enough. So 2.5. That looks good. So I just applied it to everything. And I printed the underbase under all of it and let the black on the outer edge cover up that edge of the white so that it didn't show through. What that allowed is I just printed every color on top, didn't have to worry as much about registration of the underbase portion. I just worried about how everything registered to each other from then on out. So the, how the black and the colors registered to each other. And I printed the black last so that it could cover up any adjustments or anything, which, but these were butt to butt. So there wasn't any adjustments that really needed to be made. You could actually take these colors. If you want to make registration a little bit more simple, you could take, and knowing that you're going to print the black on top last, you could take each of the colors and drill down into here and you could do each of them as an offset path and expand them a little bit. So instead of going negative 0 0.025, we would go 0 0.025. Let's do zero five and see how that, I think two five is a little much. If I zoom in here, see it, it was behind the white layer. So you want to make sure you bring that to the front because that white layer was covering it up. But if you want to expand that a little bit, this will give you more grace in your registration. This will allow you to have a little bit more margin for error and the black is going to cover that up. If you're printing with water-based inks, this is really not that big of a deal because now you're going to have to flash in between these. You don't have to flash much, but the colors will start to combine. But you're not overlapping a ton. You, it, this needs to be, this is probably too big right here. If I made this a little smaller, offset path, we would probably want to do back to that 05 or maybe even less than that. That looks like a lot. Yeah, so just very minor. You're really got to, not going to notice it. I'm not sure how this would behave in Plastisol. I don't think you would be able to do this wet on wet with water base, but maybe you could. Maybe it's just not overhanging enough to where it really makes a difference. But just know that if you're having a hard time with registration, that is one way you could cheat the system to give yourself a little bit more flexibility, just expanding that a little bit, knowing that your black is going to cover up. Alternatively, you could also expand the black. So, you know, if the color, if you didn't want to go in and expand all of those, you could expand the black slightly. So if I did this, expand it slightly. Now it has a little bit of, of coverage there that's going to give you a little bit more grace in your registration. All right, that is it. You just be sure you have all of these turned to black and then you print the films. 
and you are all set. Make sure they're placed in the same location. My registration marks, I just have set to a, a black as well. Actually, no, these should be set to, yeah, these are set to registration. Looks like a black swatch, but it is set to registration. What that means is if I were printing this to a RIP software, whatever objects are set to the registration color, it prints that on every single film that it prints. So that's the benefit of setting it to that registration swatch. A little side note there. But anyways, I hope that helped. Let me know if you have any questions about Illustrator, about doing separations with artwork like this. This obviously didn't get into gradients or anything like that, but hopefully it gets you started with doing separations on kind of a basic level and even handling some under base scenarios so that you could be able to separate that part of your artwork as well and burn some films and get to printing. But if you have any questions about Illustrator or about separations or anything else screen printing, please let me know. I love to hear your questions. I love to hear your feedback. Until then, uh, until the next video, I hope you're having a great day and we will see you next time.